little ladder to help run up I need a little water to fill my cup A little rest of sunshine Make me feel so fine I want a warm blanket on a cold winter night A cup of coffee in the morning light But most of all, babe, I need some loving all the time Red Hawk Premium Peppers, and want, want to tell me a little bit about your company? Uh, well, let me see. We have been in business. This, I think, this September will be in business uh, four years officially. Uh, pretty much been making just about everything you see here on the table for years and years and years, even before it was business. And uh, yeah, after so many people telling us to finally sell it, we decided, well, okay, let's give it a go and. Uh, Four years later, we've won awards across the country, and we're having a hell of a lot of fun doing it. <laughs> <laughs> now, what would you say your favorite pepper is? You know, that that's a big depends. Um, I mean, if I'm looking for you know, just a certain type of heat, I mean, that's why, I mean, honestly, we have so many different products. I think I try to specialize more in finding that one particular pepper for that you know that'll bring that one special flavor to it so I mean I really I have a passion for my wild varieties so Chiltepin is probably my personal favorite they're just you know wee little buggers like that hmm. grow naturally in Texas and down into the Sonoran Desert but um, you know that little bugger is every bit as hot as a habanero so yeah I mean it's just something until you've tried it there's just no no describing it. it's a lot of fun but um, I mean just for everyday personal use um, you know I eat a lot of Fresnos which is you know very similar to uh, just a jalapeno if I really want the heat then you know I mean I'm, I'm more than happy to eat a Reaper seven pots scor uh, scorpions I mean you name it so the nice thing is not only do I sell it, but I also really enjoy the flavor of it. <laughs> so, an addiction. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see here, they do have quite a variety. And also, some relish and honey mustard. We've got honey mustard and relish. Great. Got our pepper jams. And mild, medium. Ooh, pepper jam. And pretty damn hot sauces. <laughs> Mm -hmm. and your website is redhawkpeppers.com? Redhawkpeppers.com. Great. Well, you got to try something on camera at least. Oh. <laughs> Come on, you didn't think you were getting away that easy. All right. <laughs> I'll take your recommendation. What should I try? I love all my stuff. Well, okay, I, here I was telling you about wild peppers. This is our wildfire. It's more of a traditional southwestern style, but there are wild, uncultivated varieties in that. The cool thing with that, they kind of bring out this great, almost smoky earthiness to it. But, yeah, I mean, that's my go-to sauce. All right. It's going to take a tiny bit. Oh, it's not that bad. <laughs> if, if you're eating Butchalokia fresh, then, yeah, you're fine. Definitely focus more on the flavor than just the heat. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I taste the flavor right away. And the cool thing with that, the, the, the heat blend of wilds that I use, each one hits you on a different part of your palate. So you just kind of get this all around, just nice mouth burn. In the, the primary pepper in that is Butchalopia, ghost pepper. So, I mean, it's, you know, got some nice heat, but it's not killing you. Uh, I can feel it. Mm -hmm. A little bit in the back of my throat, but it's not too terrible. It does have a really good flavor there. That's the important thing. I really can't even describe it. It's almost... Oh, it's... Kind of smoky. Yeah, it kind of... I don't know why, but it kind of reminds me of 
really hot dill pickle for some reason. I can see, yeah, I can see that. Yep. Yeah, it's really good. I mean, I tasted the flavor right away. Uh, it took about half a second for the heat to kick in, but uh, it's not overwhelming or anything. Uh, now, do you want to try our Reaper base sauce? No, thank you. Uh, I'm <laughs> dreading doing my Reaper review. Honestly, I mean, it's, you know, these, these three are pretty comparable. That one's a little step up, but not much. You think you'd be able to handle it just fine. That's really good, though. I definitely recommend it. So, give it a try at uh, redhawkpeppers.com. Thanks for your time. Yep, thanks, guys. Enjoy the rest of the day. All right, there we go. Uh, I'm here at Bell Naturals, all natural soaps and more. Hi, I'm Heather. Hi, Heather. Can you tell me a little bit about your soaps? Uh, we make cold process all natural soaps in Balcon, Pennsylvania. And what's unique about our soaps is most of the soaps are infused with organic botanicals from our garden. Great. I'm going to give you a little look at the soaps here. I see you have some other products here. Yep, this is our new diaper cream that we just made. It's made with zinc oxide and betonite clay. And calendula infused coconut oil. Ooh, I love the coconut oil. Yeah, we have lots of coconut oil. I think almost every soap has coconut oil in it. I like how all the bars of soap are unique. They're all different. Yeah, they're fun on the top. So we have these big, long, rectangular molds and that we fill with soap, and then you let the soap sit in them anywhere from 24 to 72 hours, and then we pull them out, we let them sit another day, and then we slice the loaves of soap. Hmm. Now, the ones that look different, are they? do they have different ingredients? Yeah, they all have different ingredients. So this, like this pinkish one, has Earl Grey tea, which is making the soap pink, and lemongrass in it. This one is like, there's several herbs, plantain, black walnut, comfrey, out of the yard that infuse the oils, and buttermilk. And then it has basil essential oil in it. Uh, we also keep bees and have honey and wax. So this is our Castile bar that has beeswax and honey in it. pattern on the back. Okay. Uh, do you have a website? We do have a website. It's bellnaturalism.com. It's under works, so. <laughs> All right. That's easy have enough. We Etsy shop. Oh, okay. There you go. All right. Well, that's Bell Naturals. All natural soups. <laughs> Yep, thank you for your time. I'm here at Simon Leach Pottery. Uh, so, uh, do you want to tell me a little bit about your company? Yes, well, we're not really a company. I'm just a one-man band. Oh. Uh, I'm a studio potter. Uh, came over from England to the U.S. in 2009. And um, I've been doing making pots now since 1979 and uh, I believe it's a, a great craft. We're taking raw materials from the, the ground that we tread under feet, under our feet, then we're using our bare hands along with, along with water and the most basic wheel, uh, or let's say the most basic mechanical device, which is a wheel. This is a wheel which uh, is designed by my uncle in England back in the 1940s and uh, it's a design that you'll see all over the world you won't see very many of them over here in the US this particular wheel is uh, uh, I gave the plan to an Amish friend of mine and he makes these for me over in Big Valley and um, for me I consider it an honor and a privilege to be able to make my living through my craft using my hands using these simple machines the potter's wheel uh, firing my my pots in a gas-fired propane kiln 
right here in this locality, here in Milheim in Penns Valley. And um, it's great to be able to use our hands to make a, a living. And I feel that not just pottery, but anything that is handmade is, is, a, is it's like, uh, it's like when I pick up a, a pot out of the cupboard or a cup out of the cupboard, of, uh, a mug, that may be made by another potter, but it's like, it's like an old friend, you know, you take it out of the cupboard, it's, it's, it's not like, a sterile factory made item it's it's handmade right it's more personal it's more personal you see so i don't know what else to say in a nutshell but i mean that's it really i i'm all the time coming up with new designs and new new uh, new creations and uh, Of course, don't forget, years ago, pottery were potters, we were in abundance because we were, we were needed. We were needed uh, in the community, you know, to make storage vessels for, for people. Uh, these days, of course, other, other materials are used instead of that, but um, plastic being one of them, well, plastic is, you know, something we really want to steer away from and it's really a good healthy choice to actually go back to to using handcrafted handmade items and having them in our lives I think is important because we live very much in a, an age where everything is factory made where everything is plastic where everything is made by a machine and we are making things by hand for people to use to take into their hands and use in their homes, at their table, drinking a cup of coffee, pouring a liquid, baking something in the oven. They're taking that handmade item. And that is so much better than, you know, a factory made item. Yeah, it's a lot more natural and sustainable. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, great. And that's about it. Anyway, that's from all from me, Simon Leach from Milheim. And I always say to all my students, keep practicing. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, Simon. I appreciate your time. Take care. Thank I'm you. I'm here at Heath Run Maple. And uh, why don't you tell me a little bit about your products here? Uh, Heath Run Maple, we're located in Potter County and near the town of Ulysses. We make our product with a wood fired evaporator. We don't do anything to speed up the process so we do not use reverse osmosis or a filter press so our syrup is uh, very, very, very flavorful delicious and flavor uh, most it. people that try it um, really enjoy the flavor that it has. Most of the syrup that's made today is made with reverse osmosis and filter presses so our product is uh, actually quite unique. Uh, Along for, with, yeah. we make sugar, maple Ooh. sugar and maple cream which is a uh, consistency of a peanut butter, but it tastes like maple. Maple syrup is not just used in um, pancakes. It's not just a breakfast item. You can interchange this out with recipes exclusively with granulated sugar. You use just a little bit less. If it calls for a cup, it's about a third of the ratio. So it's maple syrup is definitely one of those pantry items that you should have around on stock at all times. Wow, I learn something new every day. <laughs> yeah, it's really, Great Bee is a great, there's a great recipe out there. It's olive oil, balsamic vinegar, and uh, this maple syrup, this great, robust flavor. Uh, and whip it up in the blender and toss it over a bed of greens or use it as a marinade. It's fantastic. These bottles are beautiful. That's candy. That's the maple candy. Candy? Try that. Yeah. Mm, I'll try it. The syrup's really, really good. Good. Yeah, it's the uh, candy is really good. Yeah. It's really, it's really one of the yeah. great mm. ways to utilize. We actually make our, out. we do make our candy. This candy is made with a little bit darker syrup than most people would make their candies mm. with, but it has a lot more flavor, and I think it makes it, it just, it's a real tasty treat. Yeah, it is good. Yeah, it's really good. Wow. Do you have a uh, website? We do. 
Heath Run Maple Products dot com. And a Facebook page. Yep. Heath Run Maple is our Facebook name. So. Great. Well, I appreciate your time today. Yep. Thank you. I'm here at Wilson Home Farms uh, Personalized Backyard Farming. You want to tell me a little bit about what you guys do? Yeah, my name is Woody, and I do backyard farming. So I do installations and management of home vegetable gardens, uh, fruit gardens, and also the products that go in between, like composting and crop aids, like hemlock trellises, season extension, like these hoops, and cold frames. Um, my goal is to make gardening easy for homeowners, so I tailor my products towards them. So I do installations. But then I come back and I plant your produce for you and I maintain it throughout the season so that you always have the produce throughout the whole year. So it's <laughs> like a build your garden for you business. Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I started out, I used to work for a CSA and I had a lot of complaints. They're like, why do I have to come here on Tuesday and why is it only between 2 and 6 and why am I getting radishes again? And I was like, I can get rid of these complaints, you know, I'll grow it in your backyard. You can pick it whenever you feel like it, and you can tell me what you want to have grown, and so you won't ever have radishes if you don't want radishes. Oh, that's a great idea. <laughs> uh, your website is wilsonhomefarms.com? Yes, it is, wilsonhomefarms.com. Great. Uh, where are you uh, based out of? I'm based out of State College. State College? Okay. I see you got a little, is that a drip irrigation system here? Um, that over there is a compost tea brewer, so I have oh, worm okay. castings that are getting uh, brewed aerobically in there, and that can be used as either a spray or as uh, just watering the plants with it. It's filled with microbes and nutrients that are good for the plants. This over here is a drip irrigation system, and I use that on all of my gardens as a way of lowering the water consumption and at the same time providing an automated watering service for all my clientele, so there's no thinking that goes into the watering there. Well, that's about it. I All appreciate right. your time. Yep, thank oh, you very much. I'm here at the Kosefi Farm booth. Uh, see, they got all kinds of garlic. Uh, can, and shallots. And shallots. Can you tell me the difference between the food grade garlic and the seed grade garlic? So, the food grade garlic, the smaller of the two, is food grade because of the size. So, it's the same garlic, it's just smaller. The reason the seed grade is seed grade and bigger is because when you break open the cloves, the bulb, and get the cloves out, you want to plant the largest cloves only. Because if you plant small cloves, it'll take years for the garlic to get up to size. So that's why this is seed grade, $12 a pound, and the food grade is only $6, $7, $7 a pound. Great, and? We have three different types of garlic, two hard necks and one soft neck. The soft neck over here can be braided. If you see garlic braids, it's always a soft neck. Yep. Hard necks you can't braid. You know, it's got a hard, stiff neck on it, so you can't do it. Hard necks are generally high flavor. Um, used to a lot of cooking, but there's different kinds. This one here, German Red, is used in sauces, stews, anything that needs a lot of full-bodied flavor. This one is good for roasting garlic. You can snip the top off and put a little olive oil on it and roast it. Or it's good in fresh use of garlic, like in salad dressing. And this soft neck, the Inchilium, is a very large soft neck, and it grows, uh, it is very, very spicy, hot, really hot, like salsa, so like you really want to bite. So. Oh, okay, I think that's what I agree with then. <laughs> I was wondering why I say spicy. Okay. And uh, do they have like different shelf lives? Does they one do. last they, longer? The soft neck seems to keep the longest, and it braids in a good year grew well and wasn't too wet like this year. This year will make it last less long because of the wetness we had all too much rain. They can in hanging in the kitchen in a break can last up to a year. These guys can last six months, sometimes less than okay. next. It depends on the variety though how long it's gonna last and it depends on how you store it. It has to get a lot of air and have an even temperature, whether it be room temperature or cool or whatever it is, it should stay the same. Out of their hibernation. Oh, great. And um, do you have a website? We have a website. It's ecosopefarm.com. That's where you can go to order stuff. Great. Well, thanks for your time today. Thank you. Well, that's about it for the farm fest. Me and my wife are exhausted. Uh, we've been walking around for the last two days. So that's about it. Thanks for stopping by. 
Uh, don't forget to check out the Farm Fest next year. Uh, go to the Farm Fest website. Uh, I'm going to put all that in the uh, description. So thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you all next time.